Hello. I am Duango AC, Keeper of Taskbot, and I am so excited to invite you to experience the Ocarina of Time Triforce Ace Showcase. We have so many fun things to show you. Uh, with us today is Ace, uh, is uh, Safe State. Hello, I'm Safe State. I'm an Ocarina of Time speedrunner. I've been uh, speedrunning this game since 2019. Been playing it long since uh, since uh, many years ago. Uh, but I've always loved finding all the, the interesting details and the glitches, and uh, there's always so much more that this game has to offer every time you look at it. Absolutely. Also with us is Nelly. Hello, everyone. I'm Nelly. I've been a Ocarina of Time speedrunner for a little over three years now, but I've been a lifelong fan of the game, and I always love learning new things about it, be that, well, just little quirks about how the game works or glitches or fan theories or everything anything like that all right so as we're getting started we're going to erase this file and start completely clean so we'll start over create a, a fresh save file this is an original us 1.0 release of the cartridge completely unmodified it's a rom you can't change it anyway this is also a real original nintendo 64. the only thing that we've done is passively tapped the rgb lines to get a clean video signal doesn't have any impact whatsoever in gameplay. It doesn't modify how the console works in any way. Now, we're going to be starting, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what's unique about this run in case you have seen it previously. Let's get it kicked off, so take it away. All right, if we're ready to start, we'll begin in three, two, one. <laughs> All right. So you might have noticed that we have a rather unusual setup for one of these runs. Usually when TaskBot is playing, it's just TaskBot doing crazy things. But in this case, this run is unique. We absolutely have to have Save State, a human runner who is quite talented. They are playing the game connected to controller port 1 right now. TaskBot will be playing on controller ports 2, 3, and 4 through most of the game. And at one point, I'll point out later, he'll also be connected to controller port 1. Now, there's something specific I need to talk to you about. This particular Reiteration was, was shown at SGDQ 2022 a few weeks ago, but this time what we're showing you is all of the behind the scenes aspects of what parts were created with what we call ACE, I'll explain that in a second, what parts were originally beta content, and some, a little bit of lore about where some of this content came from. So we're really excited to share that with you. Now, we're going to do something called ACE, Arbitrary Code Execution. And it means pretty much what it sounds like. It's the ability to execute arbitrary code. That means anything. That means that we can take over the game logic. We can add in new art. We can add in new sound effects and change text. So we're going to use that ability to stitch together a story for you that I think you're going to really appreciate. But we have to explain how we're going to do that first. There's a number of things that we have to set up in memory and a few rupees we have to collect. So I'm going to pass it over to Nelly to explain that as well as an intro to stale reference manipulation, also known as use after free, that we'll be using as our glitch to obtain ACE. So what's going to happen here? Well, uh, if you're familiar with Ocarina of Time speedrunning or any really Ocarina of Time tech at all, most things or most runs, you start off by getting a sword, maybe some rupees, you buy a shield and all that. but. It's actually very, very important which rupees we collect in terms of uh, what we want to do. Because every permanent rupee in this starting area, Kukiri Forest, is loaded in memory. I mean, that might seem obvious, but it will be very, very important that we collect all of them. Because coming up, we're going to be repeatedly reloading or uh, transitioning over a load plane and shuffle the memory or what we call the actor heap. Uh, of the game in order to, well, set it up in a very, very specific way so that we can get the outcome we want. So we're going to see safe state here, right? Uh, going to be waking up, going to be go getting the sword and collecting some rupees on the way so they can buy some Deku Nuts and a shield. Hello. Yeah. This is a good time to point out there is a donation incentive. If our donation host, or if our host can tell about you, tell that, that, that to you. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, the, the, the donation incentive here, we have a, have a bid war between um, finding out, uh, uh, confronting Sheik about their identity, either yes, do we get, or their secret identity. Um, do we uh, yes, confront them, or do we no, just leave it as is? Uh, right now, that's looking pretty good. I believe there were some donations that came through for yes, confront them. So that is in the lead right now. I'll, 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 I'll confirm the exact amount. Um, currently 185 in the favor of confronting and 58 33 no play along mm. right now so it's looking pretty good yeah. all right so what's going to be happening here and now that we're finally getting control of link yeah so it's going to be going and getting the sword as we mentioned earlier while also collecting rupees so we can buy well what we need the shield deco nuts and all of those are going to be very very important tools in order to set up srm and thereby ace later on because we're going to be overlapping certain camera glitches in order to, uh, as we will pick up a rock later on, we will have overlapped a certain camera glitch. I'll explain that when we get there, um, so that we can unload the rock as we're picking it up. And, well, you'll, you'll see how that looks. It's better seen than explained. One other note, a lot of the setup you're seeing is applicable both to what we're doing here today as well as the N64 any percent route. Yeah. It is almost identical up to a certain point. Yeah, at the end, there's uh, some angle setups that are a little bit different for this specifically, uh, but it's uh, mostly the same. Yeah. So again, just pointing out this blue rupee here as well as the bush and... Uh, a potential rupee that spawns from that, it's very, very important that we collect that in order to well, line up the memory in how we want it. The memory layout in the actor heap is very deterministic, so if we always eliminate the same or, or collect the same rupees, we'll end up with memory in a specific state that we needed it. We can optionally also pick up a few rupees by chance here, so we're trying to do that to just save a little bit of time so I don't have to throw rocks around. Mm -hmm. and don't forget rupee up here. Oh. This trick is always the hardest in a marathon setting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It is frame perfect. Ooh, it is totally A little bit early there. There, there we you go. go. There we go. <laughs> All right. And as Safe State picks up this rupee, also going to be calling Navi to get rid of the Navi Tice because. Later on, we will be uh, C upping to, uh, or entering C up camera, which is sort of a first person view of the game, where you can use visual cues on the wall to set up certain angles that you would need. It also prevents the, the camera from starting to swing around Link for a few for a few seconds, so which is very useful. Yeah, but with our ruby, ruby routing, we were able to get just enough rupees uh, to collect the Deku shield. Uh, and buy Deku Nuts, along with collecting all the permanent rupees required for the heap manipulation coming up soon. Yep. So then, what's going to happen right after this is we're going to go talk to Mido, move him out of the way, because the important thing is that we get access to the hallway right after Mido, where there's a few Deku Babas, and them spawning and despawning when you leave and enter the area will, together with... Um, the actors in the main Kukiri forest will swap around or shuffle around in the heap. So uh, we have to do very, how do you say that, like a particular movement, basically. Also facing Mido in a particular direction will change how memory is organized. So there's a lot of specific camera angling that happens here. Yeah. I should also note that this is a section we tried to make a tool assisted speedrun of and couldn't. The game has these moats, these little fireflies floating around that cause randomness that made it impossible for us to make a tool-assisted speedrun through this section reliably. And ultimately, I think it's for the better because it's nice being able to combine the forces of the save, of save state just playing amazingly and Taskbot at the same time. Okay, what was that glitch? This is Return 8. Is a, it locks the camera in a certain way because you, you tap target to flip the camera behind you, you hit C up to enter first person, you end your shield. And what that basically does it is it locks the camera in this certain angle. And now we're going to be overlapping this with another camera glitch that you can get from a crawl space and a sign. 
called Walking While Talking. Now, Walking While Talking normally locks the camera around the crawlspace. Uh, but since we have Return A, that takes precedence over it. And it's... But we can cancel Return A by hitting one of these rocks here and picking that up. So we cancel Return A, but we get the Walking While Talking camera next to the crawlspace. And now we need to make our way over to the hallway with the Deku Ball was earlier completely blind. Because what we have in our hands right now is, well, you, you might think that we picked up a rock, but the camera flying back like this actually is going to uh, make it look like something else. Yeah, it looks like Link is holding nothing. But not necessarily nothing. So Link right now is holding the code for something called a wonder item. And that is the, uh, the wonder item is the uh, invisible blue rupee that normally sits over the, uh, the skipping stone rocks. And so I was actually overwriting code for it that executes whenever it draws on the screen. And right now, the, uh, the angle I dropped the rock at made the code execute, oh, jump to Link's current facing angle. But it doesn't execute until it is on screen. So while it's off screen, I'm now setting Link's angle to a very specific value so that whenever we're able to have the camera swing around, it's going to uh, execute his uh, current facing angle, which uh, I'm going to set to actually jump to the controller inputs. So now that Link is facing an angle that points to the controller inputs, I'm going to give uh, TaskBot control, and TaskBot will start executing controller inputs as code. All right, we're going to do the ace now. Here it goes. Now, it might not look like much at first. It's just going to make Link wiggle in some strange ways. But what's happening right now is we're actually writing to the expansion memory pack. We're writing data directly to memory. Uh, we obviously can't change the ROM, but we can put data in unused memory. And Ocarina of Time does not use that. So we have now finished the part that requires all four controller ports from here on out. TaskBot will continue to be connected to controller ports 2, 3, and 4, while save state will continue to play on controller port 1. Uh, we just need to fix up a couple of things. We kind of corrupted a few, a few things just slightly when we did that glitch. We can go in and head into the house now to clear that out. And uh, that gets us in a state where from here on out, TaskBot is continuing to play and add data and, uh, and custom things that the team put together in the background at the same time save state is continuing forward. OK, we're ready for the next, uh, the first beta item, which is the debug menu. Now, this is part of the original cart. It's there on the game cart, but through uh, <laughs> traditional methods, it's uh, pretty hard to open it up. But with the power of Ace and SRM, we can open it up and give ourselves basically whatever you want. So in order to uh, speed up this presentation and showcase, we're going to be giving, getting ourselves 20 hearts, double magic, certain items to uh, speed things up, an empty bottle and some bugs, some warp songs, basically uh, anything that you <laughs> would want to speed up. Yeah, we don't want to keep you here for several hours just getting all the quests complete. But in your mind, consider that all of the temples have been completed. Mm -hmm. OK. So yeah, here's another beta thing that's on the cart. It's an Arwing. This is just on the cart. It's uh, theorized that it was used early in development to test the targeting systems and the Volvagia flight pattern from uh, the boss of the Fire Temple. But yeah, no, it's a fully functioning Arwing. Which uh, we can make quick work with the boomerang. So if, it comes uh, back down to Earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Nice. Alright, and then the next thing to showcase is going to be over in Lost Woods. Yes. Now, one of the things the team wanted to do was stitch together beta content you just saw that really is on the cartridge with some other things that we want to show you later on. But to get there, we, we wanted to create a path that made some sense. And so we sourced some ideas from the original Legend of Zelda game. That was my game growing up. And I remember you could get into the Lost Woods and you could go north, west, south, west, and you would find a secret exit. Well, what we've done here is we're having Link get lost out of the Lost Woods out of a north exit, get lost out of a west exit, get lost out of a south exit, and then get lost out of a west exit again. And by recreating that original Zelda pattern here in 
this game, we're, we're able to kind of give ourselves a little bit of time for TaskBot to write more data into memory, so the next things we want to show you are ready. Um, but it also is just this wonderful hom homage to the original game. So, when we go back through the Lost Woods, you're going to hear a particular sound, and that is... Yeah, we have now solved a puzzle that was completely custom and created by the team. And uh, what that did is it took or it spawned a new actor that is built by models left in the card. So you have different unused Kukiri heads and bodies and all that. And we have stitched that together to create a whole new model featuring custom text. We also have some custom dialogue. Now, throughout the remainder of this showcase, we're going to leave the text on screen and we won't talk over it for the most part so that you can read it. This was all put together to tell a very interesting story for you. It looks like he's looking for bugs. We do have some bugs, so. Huh. A flying bug. They like flowers. Do you know where, uh, do you have an idea where you might find that safe state? Well, I know that there's a shop uh, in the Hyrule Markets. Mm -hmm. I think we might have some luck there. And just a reminder that we gave ourselves plenty of warp songs, specifically Prelude and Minuta Forest, so we can more easily get across the world. So this next uh, piece of content we're going to show is uh, is more beta content that is uh, left on the ROM, uh, but it has been uh, a little bit modified so that it works. So. As we go off to, to grab this uh, butterfly, uh, it is actually uh, from the cartridge. It is uh, the, the model we're going to be showing here. Uh, well, it doesn't it's seem not, to be in the shop yet. It's not there. Uh, let's, let's try talking to the owner. There it is. Okay, so this is the uh, the get item model for the butterfly. Uh, it actually uh, has uh, some issues with it uh, if you were to try to view it normally through the game. Uh, none of the, the textures seem to be glitched, so uh, we used Ace to patch them so that they work. Uh, and then we also added this this fun story around it so that uh, we have a, a proper way to show it off. Yeah, there were uh, quite a few bugs with this certain bug. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yes. How ironic. A yeah. buggy bug. All right, we're going to be warping back. And while that's happening, we have some time for some donations. Excellent. Thank you very, very, very much. They are coming in thick and fast. Uh, I'll try and crack through them. Tiny Tim with a fiver saying, Hey all, donating for the wonderful Dwango AC in Taskbot. What you do is so incredible and always a fascinating watch. Also, shout outs to Bowie, who is a true gent. Good luck with the showcase. Cheers. Thank you so much, Tim. Super kind. We have uh, 150 from username Niels. Wow. I really want to know Sheik's secret identity. I'm betting it's Ganondorf's hidden younger brother. Of course, thank you so much indeed, Niels. Um, 100 from Nova186. Thanks to all the runners and people who make the event possible. You're all beautiful and great people. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, CD Romatron, $15. Beep boop, etc. Et very excited to see this live. Thanks for organizing this showcase. Um, and there's a, a, a 20, $20 from, from Mayasen that just goes, Taskbot is so cute. I agree. He is cute. Taskbot um, is very cute. And then I guess for one final one real quick, Taskbot, Taskbot donated $100 <laughs> saying, Taskbot has learned a new function while waiting for turn. Saving children has been activated. Aww. Thank you so much indeed, Taskbot. So talented. Yeah. <laughs> you can do so much. Uh, I'll throw it back to you. All of those went to a bunch of um, upcoming bid wars, but I wanted to kind of throw it back to you guys. So Perfect. Thank back, you. Back to you. So we're now here with the uh, the butterfly. Yep. Ooh. Seems like nobody likes Mido. All right. And here is a uh, magic powder that has been added in. Is a repurpose of the odd potion model that's normally in the adult trading class for the big Goron sword. We have repurposed it here in order to uh, guide this story along a bit.
You might remember that item was introduced originally in Link's Awakening, also used in Link to the Past, and that model was uh, very similar to those games. <laughs> oh. And we'll say no to the dialogue option so you can see the alternate text. They really don't like Mido. Oh, no. I mean, I don't really like Mido. Just it's, saying. It's... Yeah, yeah, okay. That's Sounds fine. like he hasn't made the best uh, friendly decisions. <laughs> Upgrade our masks. Yeah. So, as you might be aware, uh, there's this game called Majora's Mask that was released after Ocarina of Time. But Ocarina of Time also has its own little mask system. However, it doesn't really do a whole lot except change some few uh, dialogue... Uh, just just some dialogue here and there. Uh, but it's, it's pretty clear that they wanted to do something more with it. So we have taken the... or the team has taken the opportunity to give the mask... Um, give the mask sequences a lot more purpose. Yeah, so we can see the Gerudo mask now can charm people with the perfect lady's disguise, even Gerudos themselves. Mm -hmm. I think you should uh, uh, do one more mask. So you can see us going into the debug menu to just swap out what masks we have, but using a little trick to leave the Gerudo mask on another C button. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might uh, have a sneaking suspicion what might happen if you upgrade the bunny hood, which normally doesn't do anything. But now we're fast. Yeah, so Majora's Mask, uh, I mean, Ocarina of Time has this uh, mask trading quest that is sort of left in this vestigial state where it, masks don't really do much or just an excuse for some sort of progression. Uh, but so we, we can tell that the uh, developers obviously wanted to uh, bring more life to these masks by Majora's Mask. So we thought that we would uh, also include that functionality uh, and bring to life these masks in uh, this ace demo. Yeah, and I think this is a great spot for some more donations if you have them. Yeah, sure. I, I did power through quite a few of them, but uh, we have one here from Zastra. $25. It says, saw this run on SGDQ this year. Such great work. Happy to see it again with some more background information. A classic line to finish it. Greetings from Germany. <laughs> um, and that went towards um, confronting Sheik about their secret identity. Yes, confront them. Ah, Very or much you indeed. can play that, along. Take your pick. <laughs> that is looking pretty good so far. I'll just give a quick update on how that's looking. It's 210 for confronting Sheik about their secret identity and $58.33. Okay. No, play along. But yeah, we're heading over here to Gerudo Valley and Gerudo Fortress because, well, we have, we have a mask now that could be useful in uh, sneaking in this child. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how this works. Yeah, so normally uh, whenever you approach these uh, guards uh, as a child in the original game, uh, in, the, in the normal game, uh, they sort of just tell you to, to scram. But now that we have the uh, upgraded mask... It seems that she thinks we're a half Hylian, half Gerudo child. Yeah. Also featuring uh, a lovely little gate-lowering animation there. Also some flavor text from the other guards. Sounds like they have it rough out here in the desert. Yeah. Make sure we're far away enough before equipping Bunny Hood again. Yep, don't want to get accidentally caught here. But yeah, I'm just going to be heading into the interior of Gerudo's Fortress, also known as the Thief's Hideout. Because uh, there's some more Gerudo guards we can talk to there, just to find out something more.
Good time. Oh, Naboo is also here. Seems that the uh, the mask has seemed to fool uh, Naburu as well. As well. <laughs> or maybe not. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's to be expected from a future sage. Yeah. It's always interesting to see when it's uh, a little more complicated than just good versus evil. So we're coming up on our first custom created cutscene. So coming up now, any second here, it's going to be a reimagining or expansion, so to say, of the extended song system that already exists in the game. After we're a bit cheeky, of course. Uh, PCs never take no. <laughs> oh yeah, not in uh, not not of time. But yeah, you may be aware of. When you just play the ocarina like normal, you can use L and R to uh, do sharps and flats, along with the control stick. And also, when you play song for the Scarecrow in Lake Hylia, you can play very, 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 very long songs. So there's clearly a, a system in place that can handle this. But none of the songs in-game normally utilize this, so uh, figured why not do that? As Nibiru said, this song is for a time-traveling hero. Mm -hmm. And it represents courage. Yeah, as you... Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, as you might have read there at the end, this song allows us to warp or uh, to turn adults or child again just wherever we can play a song so with no need to go and pick up the master sword or put it back in order to do that and this was uh it's theorized that this was an intentional or uh, an idea that was planned to be in the game because you have song of time blocks like all throughout the dungeons and some uh, overworld areas where you just play Song of Time to them and they kind of disappear. But they don't actually disappear. You send them through time to the other, like, either seven years back or seven years in the future. More, uh, well, when they work, that is. Yeah, so now that uh, we've shown off the, uh, the full Song of Time to become adult, we're coming here uh, to the Running Man. Uh, if you've uh, uh, raced the Running Man, then uh, you are probably familiar with uh, his famous line where no matter how fast you get to the very end, he always says he beat you by just one second. And speedrunners have even used uh, glitches to freeze the timer at zero seconds so that they get there 
as the uh, right the moment it starts, but he still says, I beat you by one second. So if he's able to finish the race one second before it starts, it sounds like there's some time shenanigans going on there. But now that we have the full song of time, I think we have our own time shenanigans we can use as well. Yeah. So finally we can uh, give a shot at beating the running man. It's gonna make Save it's gonna make their way over to Hyrule Field first. One of the nice things about transformative art like this is we can take dreams from our childhood and make them reality. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go. We're now going back in time seven years before the race ever started. I wonder what that will lead to. Yeah. Oh, the, well. The timer looks interesting, at least. Yes, so the timer, if you have a very, very negative number, this is what happens to the timer. So we've gone back in time seven years. The timer is a very negative number. And uh, so we're going to try to get to the end of the race before it ever starts. Oh, and by the way, that's the, uh, the child running man. Uh, he doesn't know what's coming to him in the future. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and head off to the... Uh, uh, to the Lost Woods, and uh, I think this is a good time for a donation. Excellent time, because we do indeed have one. Um, Blaster Mac twenty dollars says it's such a great time seeing Save State playing the game alongside Taskbot. The, the developer commentary going um, going on adds so much more to this already amazing run. Keep on keeping awesome, guys. And that was split between uh, the bonus game Shred Shred of Revenge and yes, confront Sheik about their secret identity. Thank you very much indeed for that donation as well. Back, back, back to you guys. All right, so we're yeah. here at the Lost Woods. Uh, yeah, where the running man ends up at the end of the race. But we will be coming from seven years in the past. So I think uh, we might have a small head start. Yeah, so you can see the timer is still negative, uh, but it is counting up to zero seconds. Uh, like three, two, one, zero seconds. And we are officially here before the race ever started. Doesn't seem too happy about that. I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll be respectful about losing a race. Maybe we'll get a special reward yeah. in the middle of Hyrule Field. Uh, like all NPCs in this game, once you complete their little quest or challenge, they're going to uh Try to give you something in uh, uh, in return. Unfortunately, we don't have the uh, bunny hood. We're having to resort to more traditional OOT movement. Well, speedrunning traditional. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a good Hess. So it's been a while since we've shown you something that was actually beta content on the cartridge, but we're coming up on this. This is the a giant purple rupee that really is on the cartridge, and its actual behavior is to blow up. That's what it actually does. <laughs> okay, maybe he's not too happy about losing. So yeah, Running Man is now a completely custom boss fight. We'll see how, how safe state fares here. Oh, arrows are too slow. He's just running circles around you. Where is he? Oh! <laughs> oh. One more stab, I think? One more, maybe? It's okay, you have, you have enough hearts. He is really hard to hit. Oh, there we go, there we go. So finally beating Running Man in a... Uh, slightly but special way, I suppose.
Uh, does that work? Uh, I think that's uh, maybe against the laws of physics, but it's a video game. It's fine. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with Ace. Oh. <laughs> Again, shout outs to the amazing writing team for all this dialogue. Yeah, here we get the Sage's Charm that amplifies and enhances the magic power of its wearer to uh, represent power. Also allows us to equip the Sage's Offerings, which uh, in this case means the medallions. But first we gotta watch the Running Man run off into the sunset. Of course. Yeah, so uh, in early beta screenshots there were uh, uh, there was shown where you could equip the medallions, and now that we have the Sage's uh, Charm, we are able to do that ourselves. Mm -hmm. Also have a, a lot of magic, because it might be useful. So as we're moving to this next section, I want to give a quick shout out. Where can fi people find the OOT speedrunning community? We have a Discord that is very active for all your speedrunning and Q&A needs about anything OOT related, really. You can find the Discord on Zelda Speedruns or on uh, the speedrun.com page, so speedrun.com forward slash OOT. And the sidebar there, there's an invite link if you're curious about ever giving speedrunning OOT a shot. We also have Taskbot here, as you can see. Oh, a oh. oh. little bit too fast there. Uh, we also have Taskbot here. Taskbot is in a new form. We've spent the last couple of years building up this new body for Taskbot. He's looking really cute. I'm very happy. If you want to contribute to any aspect of the Taskbot community, whether that's building 3D models like this, or graphics, or uh, uh, making tool-assisted speedruns work on real hardware, come on over to tas.bot or discord.gg slash taskbot. We'd love to have you as part of our community. If you like tool-assisted speedruns in general, head on over to tasvideos.org. Yeah, so... Uh, for the adult dungeons, uh, for some of the adult dungeons, whenever you complete them, uh, it usually restores some sort of peace to the area associated with it. So, for example, uh, if you beat the Forest Temple, uh, it makes Kokiri Forest uh, non-hostile. And uh, if you uh, beat the Fire Temple, uh, you restore all the Gorons to the Goron City and, uh, and restore peace. Uh, however, whenever you beat the Water Temple, uh, the water fills up the lake, but Zora's domain still stays frozen over. Yeah, but now that we have access to well, the fire medallion, that is uh, very powerful. Would you... Uh, it's always been a lifelong dream, or a childhood dream, I should say, for a lot of people to uh, be able to melt the ice in Zora's domain and explore under... So, uh, you think, uh, you think we can do that now? I think with the, uh, the upgraded fire medallion, I think that's totally a possibility. Alright, well, it's worth checking out. Yeah. So, uh, there used to be, uh, or there, there were many rumors, uh, for this area specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, as, like, if, what happens if you get under the, uh, the ice? Maybe there's a, a secret area or something. But, uh, so, with the, the fire medallion, we're finally able to... Melt the ice, restoring Zora's domain to its original state. Yeah, and uh, there's also this interesting little alcove down here under the water that you might have seen messing around with Hadaban's cameras or screenshots floating around. And this was uh, theorized to lead somewhere, somewhere uh, very particular for a long time. What about the uh, the unicorn fountain? Yeah, I think uh, sounds about right. The Unicorn Fountain, in this case here, has been uh, modeled after some leaked or uh, some beta screenshots from Jan or February 1998. So, a little over 10 months of the game's final release. Featuring also a uh, little Ocarina pedestal that is a beta asset that exists in the cartridge. We have just added a, a bit of purpose to it. And this will lead us to our next uh, piece of content here. This is the, uh, we're going to be seeing here the Beta Great Fairy. 
Mm-hmm. And this is actually uh, an actor that is left in the, the cartridge. Yeah, the so model is in the same model file as the normal one you'd be used to. Mm-hmm. And you can uh, view it uh, if you use glitches to get to alternate scene setups uh, for, for certain maps um, where, it, where it happens to exist. Uh, but here we are talking to the Beta Great Fairy. Yeah, the Beta Great Fairy will give us a song that represents wisdom. Now, if it's the song in question is the Overture of Sages, which was a uh, it was floating around in early forums a long while ago, with a uh, let's say very uh, untrustworthy screenshots uh, that were most likely doctored, and in the end we found out that. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was not real, but it was a very popular fan theory in, in Dream, nonetheless, for it to be real. And so it's brought to life here. We're learning the Overture of Sages from the Beta Great Fairy in Unicorn Fountain. Through the power of Ace. Coming in. So we now have a symbol of courage, a symbol of power, and a symbol of wisdom. Also, should I play this song before the Blade of Destiny? I can only think of one sword that fits that. I believe that would be the, the Master Sword. Now, as a reminder, uh, whenever we were setting up our inventory earlier, we never gave us the Master Sword. We've had the Gregoron Sword this whole time. We haven't pulled the Master Sword, so uh, we've never opened the uh, this seal uh, in the Temple of Time. So Ganondorf hasn't had the chance to go back in time and uh, and ravish the land. So if we uh, we step outside for a second, we can see that uh, uh, things are looking relatively normal. Of course, this is uh, just added content for, uh, to make the story make a little more sense, and also as an excuse to enter Temple of Time from the entrance here, uh, because there's an interesting bug where if you try to play the Song of Time to open the door. From the prelude entrance, like if you come in and you play uh, uh, the uh, prelude. And then you come here and you play Song of Time. The door won't actually open. Like the cutscene, the full cutscene will play out. It'll do all the camera angle shenanigans and all that. And then we'll zoom in on the door and nothing will happen. So it's a nice little excuse for us to fix that. So this cutscene uh, exists normally in the game. Um, there's nothing special about it, ex except that we're here as adult. That's the only difference. Um, we, that's we, also very possible with uh, in the normal game with without too much shenanigans. Yeah, door time skip and uh, uh, and just coming back as adult after uh, using RBA to get the song of time. You can uh, do this on a like in a normal uh, setting. We did have to play the full song of time there because that replaced the normal song of time. And here is, well, since this is the first time we're, we've gone here, we still have this cutscene. Albeit um, with a different sized link. Yeah, uh, moderately. <laughs> but yeah, now since we, we never picked up the Master Sword, it's still here, even though we're adults. But we have something, we have something else to do here now. Yes, we are here to play the Overture of Sages. I think that's a great idea. We were authentic. You have to come to the sword to play that song or it will not let you advance. You can't just play it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So this has brought us to the Sacred Realm. This is very similar to the uh, standard Sacred Realm in the game, although this has been uh, recreated by our team to uh, allow us to walk around on these different platforms, as well as uh, uh, let us follow through uh, to this next part. And just a reminder, like this is uh, 
to view this from the context of we have gone through the dungeons and, the, and helped all the sages and all that, but we sped that up significantly by opening the debug menu earlier and gave ourselves all the quest items that we needed. So each of these sages will be giving us a blessing and probably some advice here and there. And again, huge, huge shout out to the writing team for making all this wonderful and amazing and authentic looking dialogue. Special shout out for this bit of uh, punnery that's coming up here. <laughs> yep. I'd also like to shout out our composing team who made beautiful music and wove it together here. I guess that's what you call love at first sight. All right, well, we are coming up to the close of that donation incentive. Okay, so do you want, would you like to like the results now? Or? Not yet, just okay. a couple, couple seconds. I was wanted to give you some advance notice. Excellent, thanks so much, Anita. And she did say that uh, she was gonna see us in a couple years, so he wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. Charm. Probably during the uh, the Zelda flight cutscene. Yep. Seems like Sheik knows more than they're letting on. Yeah, it sounds like uh, Sheik knows something's up. Alright, what is our donation incentive? Do we ask about the secret identity, or if Sheik is a boy or a girl? With two hundred twenty to one hundred eight dollars, yes, confront them about their secret identity. All right, let's see. <laughs> she should totally get the wrong one. As we transition to this next portion, and for anyone who's just joining us, this is just a reminder that everything you're seeing here is happening on the original cartridge, on the original console. We've simply used arbitrary code execution and a lot of button presses to stitch together everything that you've seen here today. Check. That image was also from the original game. This is how you actually get the Triforce in Ocarina of Time. Combining the power of Taskbot with Ace and Save State playing through this game so well, 
we're finally able to bring together the dreams of millions of people who've played this game and appreciated it. Yes, and uh, this scene in particular uh, is recreated from old uh, VHS footage of, uh, of early builds of the game that showed Link uh, getting the Triforce in this fashion. Uh, and uh, it's been meticulously recreated to look exactly like it could with such few resources we could. So very much shout outs to the team that was able to, to put this scene together. Yeah, everything from the walls to the amount of steps to the chest to the animations was all very, very, very meticulously recreated from those old VHS tapes. But we have one more thing to show you. Please have a look at this. Well, well, being king of Hyrule sounds like a lot of responsibility. And I have to be honest, I think you should be giving your rupees to save the children. We are... <laughs> we are the hero of time, after all. I think it, it only makes sense for us to see the future. So what do you say, folks? Should we see the future? As a reminder, this uh, is all in-game. This is not a video. Everything you're seeing and hearing is the Nintendo 64. It's time. Type here together in the chat. No matter where you are in the world, you can be here right now. Oh, oh. Go no way! No way! Oh my God! Woo!
Thank you, Link, for all you have done for us. Zelda, Hime, Arigato. They'll give you a second to talk, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> we have so many people to thank. In particular, Soren, who was the main, the main person who pulled everything together. But this wasn't just one small team or the people you see here on camera. This was a huge team of over 25 people working over the course of over two and a half years since Ace was originally discovered. This is a love letter to this game, to the community, to the fans that brought in rumors. Everything we were able to do using the power of Ace to pull all of these stories together through custom art, through custom music, through new dialogue, to tell a new story that brought us all here together. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Even... <laughs> Anything we said was beta content really was beta content and really was on the original cartridge, including this scene that you're seeing here. This cutscene was part of the original game and wasn't used. I want to put a special shout out to our partner creators and our partner reactors. You're seeing their names here on screen. They partnered with us to create other video content on YouTube. Be sure to check them out. We also released the official soundtrack in a very unusual place. <laughs> Even here, there's fan theories of what was lurking in this desert area. But thanks to the power of careful camera positioning, you can see a pyramid appearing back there. As we close out, I want to say thank you so much for everyone who helped contribute to prior research that led to the developments over the years. If you want to join OOT, the community, speedrun.com slash OOT, task.bot or discord.gg slash taskbot. On behalf of ESA, and the whole team and Nintendo for creating this game, I want to say thank you. <laughs>